Hey guys, Mr. Myers is here, and today I'm going to start on the essentials of calculus text, and we're going to look at each of these videos. Today is the very first video, lesson 1-1, one -one. Um, and for those of you that are coming from maybe not my particular class, I like to break up my videos uh, so you won't see lesson 1-1 one -one all in one video. I like to break them up into smaller pieces because uh, if I did one video, it would take like 20, 25 minutes. And nobody wants to sit there for 25 minutes. But you could break them up, watch them piece by piece. So uh, lesson one, one is going to be in two videos. So the first part of it is going to be on slopes and lines. So in uh, unit one, a lot of this unit is review. So the first few ones, you'll see me going pretty fast through some of this review. It's stuff you should already know, just kind of getting those uh, math brains thinking again, all right? So first, I want to review just a little bit about slope. Slope, if you don't remember here, is rise over run. I think slope is something that we kind of always think about. One thing that we want to make sure that we understand is the idea of the context of slope being, now uh, my, my air conditioner just turned on. It is blazing hot here. Uh, it's going to be like 107 today. Anyway, um, slope is rise over run, the difference, the change in y over the change in x. And we really want to understand the context of what slope is later on. So the, just to kind of remind you, slope is the, the change, the rate of change, right? So the rate of change as we move from um, the x to the y. So the rate of change of y as res with respect to x. And we're going to talk about that more in context and what that means in, in terms of a real life situation later on. But for now, slope is rise over run, change in y over change in x. So let's get going here uh, with some of these examples. So we want to find the slope of each of these pair of points. So what we're going to do here is we can, we can all right, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to use this formula, change in y over change in x. So we're going to do two, slope here. So I'm sorry, I'm skipping to number two. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're just going to look at this right triangle here. And we've got the change in y, one, two, three, four, over the change of x, one, two, three. And this is a negative slope, so it goes down four and over three, and there's my slope there. All right, so we can do it looking at the graph. If we did it at the points, we do uh, y2 minus y1. I'm only going to write this once here, and we're just going to do the other ones straight up so 2 minus 0 over 4 minus negative 2 so it's plus 2 and I'm gonna get 2 sixth which is 1 third all right pretty easy peasy my slope here is 2 minus 2 over 2 minus 3 which is 0 over negative 1 which a slope of 0 now a slope of 0 is a horizontal line right so want to remember that for later it's gonna so for our fourth one here, we're going to have the slope is going to be 5 minus 2 over 3 minus 3, which is 3 over 0. Ah, I exploded the world. We can't have over 0, right? We cannot divide by... Chuck, Chuck Norris can divide by 0. So we cannot divide by 0. So this, is, this slope is called undefined. Now, an undefined slope is a vertical line. So we're going to want to remember that again for later, too. All right, so let's continue on here. Ooh, that's not what I want to do. So now let's talk about some lines here. We have uh, parallel lines. In parallel lines, these slopes are going to be the same. Perpendicular lines are going to have the slopes that are negative reciprocals or opposite reciprocals. So basically, you're just going to take the reciprocal and make it negative. Okay, so here's an example right here of where I have perpendicular slopes. <clears throat> I'm sorry, perpendicular lines that have opposite reciprocal slopes. This right here is probably the most important form of a line that you're going to be dealing with in this in this course. You really want to know, and you know what, if you don't memorize it now, you will know it by the end of this course. Point slope form, the most important um, form of a line that we use because we want to create equation of lines lots and lots and lots of times in calculus. So we're going to use the point slope form because it's easiest to create a line using the point slope form because all you need is the point and the slope which are going to be important later on and we have the slope intercept which you've seen before y equals mx plus b which we're not i mean notice here i don't have that highlighted um, but it does come up and the general form so let's find the equation of a line described here 
And I want to make something clear once I do this. So first of all, I know that the line goes through two, three, and it has a slope of negative three. So I'm gonna use the point slope form. This is y1, this is x1. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And that is, a, that is an equation of a line. Now it doesn't tell me to put it in slope intercept. So if it doesn't tell me to put it in slope intercept, then I don't need to put it in slope intercept, okay? Um, one thing about this course you'll find is, is that sometimes simplifying can be a problem for us because if we simplify incorrectly, then we're gonna miss points there. We wanna make sure that we do what we are told to do, follow the directions, but not often do we need to do any more than that. So at least in my class, if I say find the equation of a line and I don't tell you what form to put it in, Point slope is a form you should really leave it in because that's the easiest one to go through. All right, we want a vertical line through negative one, two. Now, I just talked about vertical lines, right? I said that a um, vertical line is going to have an undefined slope. A vertical line is going to be x equals whatever x value you have here, negative one. This is a vertical line. A horizontal line would be y equals two or y equals whatever y equals value that you have in that point okay so those are vertical and horizontal lines all right got page two here we have a few more examples and then uh i'll be done with this one so let's find the line through negative one two that's parallel to the graph of two x minus five y equals five so the first thing i want to do is i want to um, put this in slope intercept form all right, so I'm going to subtract 2x over. And then I'm going to divide everything by, this is my first step, by negative 5. Okay, and then my second step will be to find the equation of that line. So I'm going to have y minus y1, which is 2, equals m. Now, m is my slope. m is the slope. It's parallel. So it's going to be this same slope is going to be my slope, right? 2 fifths times x minus, well, we're going to go plus 1 because this is x1. Now, I want it in slope-intercept form. So I told you to put it in slope-intercept form. So you're going to need to put it in slope-intercept form. So we're just going to go ahead and distribute. And then add 2 over to both sides. And then we will have our answer here. Uh, we'll just leave it as 2 and 2 fifths. No point making it any harder than it is. Okay, number 8. This time it's perpendicular, so remember that we want it to be in uh, the negative reciprocal. We're using the same one here, so we're using the same line as we did in the last example. So our second step here is now we're going to do the same thing. y minus 2 equals, now what's the slope of the perpendicular line in this case? The slope of the perpendicular line is negative 5 halves, right? It's the negative reciprocal. So then we're going to have y minus 2 equals negative 5 halves x plus 1. Now I want it in general form. So what I'm going to do here in general form is I'm, I'm going to distribute first. And then I'm going to multiply everything by 2 to get rid of the fraction. And then I'm going to add 5x over and add 5 over. So I'm basically going to put everything to this side, right? And then add 5. And I'm going to have 5x plus 2y plus 1 equals 0. So that's general form. Right, and this is a general form. If you look back in the last page, that would be general form. All right, so last two examples here, we're gonna draw the graphs of these lines. So we're gonna have uh, a few ways we can do this. The first way is to look at the x and y intercepts. So if I just, if I just look at this part, three y equals nine, I'm gonna get y equals three. That's the y intercept. All right, so we can plot that point here. And if I just get rid of this, so basically y equals 0, 
I'm going to get 2x equals 9. So x equals about 4.5. That's the x-intercept. Sorry, 9 halves. Did I say 9 over? Did I say 2 ninths? I meant 9 halves. Um, so 4 fit 1, 2, 3, 4.5 is like it's about right there. Okay, so then I can draw the graph like that using the x and y intercepts. Or I can solve this and put it into slope intercept form. So I have 3y equals negative 2x plus 9. Divide by 3. And I get 2 thirds x plus 3. This is what I probably would do. So I'd go up 3 and then I'd go down to 1, 2 over 3 units and draw my line like that. Okay. Uh, y equals 2, I mentioned this before, that's a horizontal line at y equals 2. So I'm just going to draw that line this way. All right, okay, so there we go. We've got a bit of a review on slopes and lines. We'll see you for the next video, guys. Bye.